<laughs> Hello, everyone. So today um, we are going to be talking to Claire Samuels of Claire Samuels Law, because you really need an advocate for you who is not only going to create the space that you need to get through a divorce, but support you, be really smart and excellent at the job at the same time. So hello, Claire. Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. So she and I have been talking a little bit before and full disclosure, I've known her for years. She's one of the first people I actually met who wore a suit when I came to town, which might sound funny, but I was a stay-at-home mom with a two and a half year old. And so when I met her, I was very impressed by her and her demeanor and how she thought and her overall energy. So um, that is why she is part of my community. So I just that, it's so funny that you remember that. I, I feel like you, I can't, I mean, I, I feel like everything. we were like very I was, sharp put together and like, and in all black, like I know we were like at a meeting. I'm like, that's so We were funny. at a whip event. It was like, yeah. I didn't even know anyone. I didn't know. And I met you and I met, um, Bailey, what's her first name? Christine. Diane. 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 Yeah, yeah just Bailey, whatever. So I met the two of you, but I had walked in not knowing anyone. I just showed up. Yeah. And I was like, everyone's in a suit. I feel very <laughs> like, like a mom, an LA transplant. It was very awkward, but you were in there and kind and actually had a conversation with me because often when I tell people, you know, I'm an intuitive or a writer some some corporate people can be quite dismissive even though they're my clients it's like they like to keep me in the closet i'm like let's let's break out the healing from the closet if you need it and it works you should own it i'm like sign me up <laughs> right, right? so um anyway that was like 11 years ago that was a long time yeah your daughter's a teenager now uh, yeah so anyway anyway so i want to talk about divorce right now um so why don't you tell everyone your philosophy on how you represent people and like what makes you so special besides what I think of you about <laughs> being their representative in the process of divorce? Yeah. Well, I mean, of course, um, you know, I've, I've gone through my own divorce. I've gone through my parents' divorce. Um, and you certainly need an advocate. I mean, that is what somebody um, needs, wants, somebody who's knowledgeable about the law, who... I tell people, you know, they want to hire family law lawyers who either this is exclusively what they do or the really, really high percentage of what they do, 80, 90% of what they do, get somebody who really focuses their practice on family law because the knowledge piece, the legal piece um, is critical. And I don't want to be dismissive of that, but what I found in um, my litigation practice and in my former life at my former law firm where, you know, I checked all the boxes and moved up through the ranks and, you know, made partner and all of that in five years and hung out there for 13. Um, clients need more. They need more. And I um, wanted to have a different kind of approach to divorce that really honors what, you know, was once a sacred um, relationship, one where, you know, some of the time, not everybody, but a lot of people, you're going to continue to share children. Um, and just recognizing the trauma that was being inflicted when people stayed in high conflict and were placed in a litigation scenario, um, I just knew there had to be a better way to do divorce. So I started my own firm and um, like to say that it's um, a becoming divorce, becoming in the fact that, you know, down on the South, you know, oh, that dress is so becoming, you know, or like you don't <laughs> typically, it's typically not an adjective used to describe divorce, but why not? Um, something, something fitting to this relationship that once was. And I also love to use that word because I think that it can be a transformative time as well for the person going through it, a time to really um, evaluate what's important to you, what you want the next chapter of your life to look like, and to be empowered to make those choices. Um, and so that philosophy coupled with knowing that I'm going to do the legal stuff. You and I are going to work on the legal stuff together, but you're going to, you nine times out of 10, not everybody. Some people come in and they've got, you know, a, a huge support network. And it's one of the questions I ask, um, because you can be the most with it, normally sane person. Yeah. And there's something, I mean, our brains are triggered by 
a divorce. And so I created a community of women like you who I've connected with over the years that I knew were valuable resources to um, my clients and put them all in one group together um, where they would be at the ready to um, support my clients for us as women business owners and people who love to take care of other people to support each other. So it's definitely got, um, you know, two really, you know, wonderful facets to it. But um, I'm finding that my clients are taking advantage of these resources and therefore can show up with me and do the work, the legal work that needs to be done in a more focused and strategic way because they've taken care of themselves first. Yeah, it's super important not to bring the baggage in the room so they could be focused and present, right? You know, I have a philosophy. There's the you you are in the marriage. Well, there's probably if the marriage isn't working, there's the you who had an idea of marriage. The you in the marriage, either you were reliving a relationship that you've known, probably your parents, even if you didn't like it, most likely there are things that you're doing that is it, right? Because you learn a way of being who you are in surviving. And then there's the who you are when you're deciding to get it, who you are during the divorce, the year of crazy after a divorce. And then just like you said, it's transformative. You become this whole other whole person and you get to decide without the input of the spouse of who you are and how you want to show up. So that being said, what are three things or if, are there just three things that when someone does call you and say, hey, I need a meeting, what should they prepare? Like, how should they walk in? Do they need all their tax records? Do they have to know, know their story? Do they have to know how it's going to work out? Or is it like open communication and then you two create a plan? How does that work? Yeah, you know, back in the day, I used to do that. I would say, you know, bring two years of your tax returns and a list of your assets and debts and a narrative, you know, because that's how I was trained. Um, and that's really stressful and not necessary for a meeting that's already very stressful. Um, the purpose of that initial consultation is really for the two of us to connect to see if we're going to be a good fit, if um, we think that we'll work well together because um, you're obviously going to be, you know, sharing a ton of confidential information about yourself. You're vulnerable. There's going to have to be a level of trust. Um, so all of those things are really important. So I don't, I have clients fill out a very simple initial um, consultation questionnaire that just gives me some of the general information I would get at the beginning of our meeting. So it feels less like a doctor's appointment when I'm like, give me your name, give me your children's names, give me your date of marriage. Like it's very basic, but those, there was a list of questions that I would ask at the beginning of every initial consultation. And I send that to clients in advance um, so they can fill that out. And it probably takes less than five minutes. Um, and that just kind of gets some of that like small talk out of the way so we can get into, you know, what's going on, kind of your high level goals and priorities, um, and then talk about my ideas of um, how the case could be approached. And, it, and really also it's a time for me to do what I think hopefully this is happening in every initial consultation, um, providing clients with an education about all of the options for resolving their dispute that are available to them because litigation is not the only path to divorce. There are lots of different ways that you can get there um, and some really good ways to do it outside of a courtroom setting, outside of litigation. And people just don't know that. They think, you know, my spouse is horrible. They cheated. They did this. And that is true. But the mm -hmm. other true thing is, is that even with all of that crazy, you know, there are narcissists, they, you know, they cheated, you know, there's still the statistics will tell you that over 90% of cases get resolved without having to go to court. So you might think, you know, people get in fear and they're like, I need a bulldog and I need somebody who's going to go for the jugular. And, I, and you know, good luck. We, we're trained to do that. We can do, you can do that too, but you'd be surprised. I mean, I think, 
after doing this for 15 years now, I think there's also a balance between, um, you know, being firm and assertive versus unnecessarily aggressive and litigious for no particular reason, because the latter just drags things out and makes it super, super expensive and makes lawyers rich. You were talking earlier before I hit record about like, you know, how it is that you want your partner to have a good lawyer too, right? So that you're not educating the other person. It's like they're being handled by someone and you can just focus on you. Right. Well, you know, people will, people will wonder, you know, should I go around town and try to like think of who the big law firms are, who the good lawyers are and go see all of them. And so my spouse can't hire somebody in their firm. Um, And I've, you know, I've always thought, and I share this, absolutely, if you feel like it, it's not a bad idea for you to go meet with two or three different lawyers um, to see who's a good fit for you. Because ha- again, you know, going back to what I said a little bit ago, like having a lawyer who's aligned with your values and who you feel like hears you and sees you and all of that, um, that is really important. But um, you want your spouse to have a good lawyer. I always say that. I'm not worried about who's on the other side of your case. Um, from a, a, you know, a a legal, you know, litigation. I'm not worried about that. You want, but you want your spouse to have a good lawyer because a good lawyer is going to be able to educate them on the law, what is and isn't possible, how the case can be resolved, what they're going to be required to do. I mean, the worst case scenario typically is if, you know, your spouse decides not to hire a lawyer, you know, or they're going to do it themselves because it can make things really chaotic. And um, so you want good representation on the other side. But at the same time, if you feel like you need to go meet with, you know, two or three lawyers to see who really is the best fit for you, um, I think that's totally fine. But doing it for the purposes of I'm going to try it because you might be conflicting somebody out that I would be like, oh gosh, uh, we were going to write them a letter and like, it'd be really great if that lawyer was on the other side. So that's good. Okay. And then the last question for just the beginning for everyone who might be considering and getting into that process, how long is the process nowadays here in Charlotte specifically? Like I know courts are backed up, And we try not to go to court to do it, but what is the average process? And does that change at all for the length of marriage? Um, So the last question is easier to answer. The length of the marriage doesn't have an an impact on how long it's going to take to resolve your case. I mean, I guess, you know, I'm going to give the annoying lawyer answer and (laughs) that it depends, you know, I mean, the more conflict, obviously, the longer it's going to take. Um, you know, the, there are different at issues that can make things more complex. If you've got, you know, two straight W-2 employees, they don't own any businesses mm-hmm. or anything like that. They've got a house, they've got some stuff like, you know, the end that can be, you know, pretty cut and dry. If you have businesses involved, you might have to hire a, you know, business valuation expert and things like that. So those can make things more complicated. Obviously, high conflict custody um, issues can um, drag things out. Um, our courts have always been, you know, kind of underfunded, overburdened. Um, yeah. There's just a, you know, there's, but you can get into court. I mean, COVID certainly exacerbated the difficulty getting into court, having things heard, the logistics associated with that you know, different judges are doing different things in their courtrooms. And um, thankfully, I'm not there a lot. So I know about it more from hearing my colleagues complain about it. And I'm thankful that I'm um, not there. Um, You know, it also depends on like what county you're in. I mean, Iredell County, I've had no problem getting into court. Mecklenburg seems a little bit more complicated. That is the nicest way I've heard you say that. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little more complicated. Yeah, it's a little bit more complicated. I love that. Exactly. Hold on. My husband is. Yeah. My appointment.